Hi guys, welcome back to the channel with Toon and Lee in Thailand. And it's about 7.30 in the morning. Roasting already. I do like the weather in Thailand, but it's not all plain sailing when you're a farmer. The weather, you, you, you look at it different ways and uh, a lot of the locals are in real trouble at the moment. When I say real trouble, what's happened is most of them are on their second attempts at growing crops like corn and cassava and uh, since the uh, what could we say the pretend rainy season that came for two weeks once that disappeared uh, the farmers have had to exhaust their water supplies in the little ponds that they've got dotted around and uh, they've now actually had to start going to the government office in the village, just outside the village rather, and uh, they're now taking tankers of water to people's farms for them. I don't mind if they come and get some of the water out of our lake because it it'll help us get the levels down so we can start digging again, but uh, I do feel for these farmers. Everyone thought the rains were coming and they did. So they, uh, they planted again and they're all failing. Anyway, the geese are out. They've not escaped. I, I let them out, and uh, it's just I find it quite therapeutic. Not that I need counselling or anything, but just started letting them out in it for half an hour in the mornings, and uh, just keep an eye on them because, well, Junior's big enough now to fend for himself, but the little one, JJ, is just a bit. Uh, about the size of a Muscovy, so um, I don't think the dogs would cause him any trouble. Vince sort of like looks after his harem, so uh, but I do like to I, I like to make sure that they're not wandering next door because uh, the bloke flooded his paddy a few weeks ago and uh, his rice is just coming up. Believe you me, these little buggers, well not so little, uh, they would destroy that very very quickly and then we'd be hit with a bill. So. Um, what I've noticed, they're eating a lot of the tough grass, which the ducks won't eat. Uh, it's just unfortunate we've only got five. We started off with two girls and a boy, and uh, they've laid two batches of eggs so far, but only one survived each time. Quite a few hatched, but they tend to uh, suffocate. So um, next time round, we're going to put some uh, a couple of old tyres in because the, the two girls seem to lay at the same time and then they're fighting over sitting on the eggs I think they're just squashing a lot of the young that come out so we've had one off each batch so far which is pretty poor they normally lay about well, I would say about 10 eggs each in a batch and uh, I would say about two thirds actually hatched. So we'll lose, we, we've lost quite a lot. It's quite disheartening that. It's quite, because they're so cute when they come out, far cuter than a duck or a, a, a chick. So um, yeah, we're gonna try that and we're gonna read up a little bit more. Uh, it's easy with chickens and ducks. They just take care of, take care of the young a lot, lot better. They do like this morning glory. <laughs> so, Toon's mum won't be happy because she likes to come and pick this but there's so much of it, it's just a joke but it's nice to it's nice to see them out and about and enjoying themselves they've had a little swim in the lake area um, but the long term idea is to actually get them going around the farm and not necessarily just around these, these ponds so uh, I'm thinking sort of like temporary temporary fencing in in certain areas and uh, getting them to clear land in what, what they call cells so uh, you know a, a cell might encompass sort of like four palms round there down there rather and uh, we'll just fence it off for a for a week get them in there every day give them some water and uh, yeah they should clear the uh, the long stuff but you can see they like the they like the long grass. Certainly the uh, the the wispy grass as well. They tend to take the seeds off the end. That's what these two are doing now. They'll have the seeds off the end of there. But they're no trouble. Really, really no trouble. And uh, a couple of times we've let them out. They'll go right up to the 
right up to the house. They're quite friendly little little things. Whereas your Campbells, the one that make your ears bleed, and and two, they're they're very skittish. Whereas these geese, you just walk near them, and quite often they'll just come up to you, trying to catch some fodder off you, obviously. Um, and that they're not too bad to shepherd to where you want them to go. So this is their first time they've been down this bit on their own. And I think what it is early on, they're on recon. They're having a good look everywhere. See little JJ's just found. See little JJ down there's just found the uh, last little bit of water from up here. Yeah, so what I think they're doing is just having a good old wander around and see where the best food is. But they also like this really tough grass as well, which we've got a few bits of. So it'll be, be good to see them eat that. If they weren't in with the ducks, we wouldn't even give them any pellet. We'd, we'd give them um, whole rice, I think. I'm becoming of the opinion that unless you've got chickens or ducks that you're looking to get an egg a day off I think just uh, wild foraging like this and rice is the way to go keep the cost down as uh, pellets just well, I know it's good stuff but it's just a ridiculous price up again don't you eat my palms and everything I've put down there We've planted all the way along here. We haven't put any bamboo down here, uh, but we've got some nice tall palms. Well, hopefully they'll grow into tall palms. And we've put a few bits and bobs that Toon's dad initially grew years ago. I think there's a, they're like a natural herbal remedy for this and that and the other. So uh, they were growing in the areas that we didn't particularly want them growing. So we've dug them up and they're transplanted most of them and they've, they've, they've taken really, really good. Found some more morning glory. Look at this sky. Hope the camera's picking up the colour. Glorious. You can hear the crows crowing or the egars garring. Bloody animals. Bloody birds, I mean. I don't particularly want them down here clear in the area because that's all going to get re reshaped anyway. Whatever. out into the crow. Ducks and the geese don't like the crows. Crows haven't actually been able to mimic the geese calls whereas they can mimic the uh, the khaki Campbell calls quite quite well. Flipping clever horrible birds the crows. Soil's drying out here now. We're still waiting for the tractor guy to come. We want it all leveling off now and then if the rains ever do come we're going to put a cover crop all the way along here and uh, plant with the trees but it's all on hold. We've spent the last two days setting up irrigation pipe work for all the all the, uh, the giant bamboo over there even that's suffering at the moment so the, the, the new growth that's coming out of the top really tall ones they're actually bending right over way before they should and uh, the ground is just it's like um, it is like concrete now so we can't wait any longer we were just hoping that the rains would come and then we wouldn't have to set up the irrigation for another few months but we can't carry on like this um, that the growth has slowed down by about half I would have thought and the leaves I've gone very very narrow they're curling over and it's not as a it's not a lush dark green anymore so, so we've spent two days setting up the irrigation we've probably got another half a day to do today we're going to start first thing this morning but Toon chose to stand on a scorpion last night so she's off her feet for a day or two and um, I'll be finishing off the uh, irrigation on me Todd. I don't mind, it's the, it's the only job that we do on the farm that we both particularly don't like. So there's more than a few frogs that get thrown around. And uh, yeah, the air is a little bit blue and we're a bit fraught with each other. Everything else we're fine, but I don't know what it is. 
bendy pipe work everywhere. That's, uh, it's not our strong point, it's our, it's our kryptonite really. But we've got it, we've got it just about there. Uh, what we did notice is that um, our solar driven pump isn't powerful enough to do the whole 160 bamboos so we've at, we, what we've got to do because we put it on last night and it, it got about halfway round we did anticipate that it wouldn't get all the way round it's only like a medium capacity pump so um, I'm gonna separate it into three three separate systems just just by putting some valves in there and that'll increase the pressure over the over the area it'll just mean that we need to um, flick the valves over every couple of hours but rather than buy another big pump uh, we'll go with that well we couldn't take another bigger pump anyway on the solar system right I think that'll do I've lost my geese and I oh they're still back over there let's have one more look at them that will do for today we were going to relocate our pump from here further down over there and just run it straight over. Of course we have got the drainage ditch but it's just so dry uh, and we're trying to grow all our aquatic plants in there. The idea is that once we get enough water back in the ditch uh, it'll all be full with all rosette water lettuce uh, the alligator weed and hyacinth uh, and then rather than trying to drag it out of this pond every time because that as we know that is quite dangerous on the slopes uh, we can just drag it straight out of here and mulch around the the palms along along there it's even not too far up there to to put it onto the to the bamboo so again it's just another little tweak on our system one to aid mulching and feed the plants and retain water but also doing it near the source so uh, we're cutting down on time and effort all right Vince mate good in it it is so quiet all I can hear is the khaki Campbells in there all having a shower this morning all splashing around sometimes the big fish are crashing behind them as they shit in the water and, and over there, way in the distance, I can hear the mayor blah de blah in the village over the tannoy system. I have now completed the strimming. And I tell you what, as hard work as it was, I enjoyed it. A brilliant workout, and um, all that free mulch, ground cover, and uh, food because it's going to rot down going back into the soil love it and uh, because our land is on quite a slope going from the road down to here that's going to tie the soil nicely together been been reading up so much on uh, different types of farming different systems and uh, it's been a bit of an eye opener. I've probably been putting it off a little bit too long. We've just been too excited and throw this in here and throw this in there and and see what happens. So you, yeah, you do learn that way. But um, yeah, I'm learning so much. My brain's hurting. There is not a soul to be seen. Someone's just started a, a tack tack top top tack tack whatever you call them way over there. I can hear that. But nothing else. A few birds chirping. You can just hear the geese pulling the uh, the grass to pieces. Idyllic, I think, is a good word for today. Idyllic and sweaty. They have had a dip in here before. I can't wait when it's when it's all done and uh, let them loose on the whole lake. Hey, things you've got to be careful because if they wander off your land and into someone's farm, you can get into trouble, obviously. But someone can just grab hold of them and walk off with them. Uh, these retail at about 1,500 bar each. So uh, we, we got them quite a bit cheaper than that because he's our neighbour. But that's what he normally sells them at and uh, he sells quite a few. I'm surprised if you're only getting one a pop on each batch. But they're lovely. I think they're beautiful creatures. And uh, 
to say they 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 got more of a character than them than uh, the chickens and the ducks. Oh, little JJ's getting full. What normally happens? They keep wondering and eating. Then they'll stop wondering and they'll just stand there eating. And then they'll sit down and carry on eating. And then they'll just sit. And half an hour later, it's Chinese buffet syndrome. They're hungry again, and off they go. But good. The soil. I hope the camera's picking it up. I mean, although the soil's totally dry now, the new topsoil. You can still see that it is totally different to the old rock that was excavated out of out of here. So hopefully lots of nutrients in there. And a lot easier to dig as well. I don't know why everything's looking so beautiful today. I uh, walked around with the watering can yesterday. I don't think I don't mean I was watering the whole farm by watering can. Not even I would attempt that. Um, but I'd made up a, a new batch of chicken poo soup, so uh, all the papayas got a bit of that. Uh, all my moringa seedlings, they're quite big now, they didn't make the, the mix too strong and they're coming on really well. Planted a load of garlic as well, and for those of you that have got the Farmer Giles piles, or your bum grapes, I've transplanted and created a Beijing grass um, bed. So I don't mean to sleep on, I mean where I'm growing it. Um, I've got about nearly a hundred plants growing and they've, every single one's taken, I'm not, I'm not joking. So in the future we will be able to supply <laughs> bum grape supper, sufferers with our cure. If you haven't checked out that video, uh, that, I'll, I'll highlight that at the end of this one with a uh, with a little uh, end screenshot that you just click on it'll take you straight to that video honestly guys it, it does it does does work I was a sufferer for quite a few years with that and uh, that sorted me out so uh, Beijing grass I think it was uh, Rama number no. nine the king the, 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 the late king of Thailand brought it over here uh, so it's, it's not that common but it grows like crazy, so you can actually buy the plants of us, or you can just uh, have the have it all trimmed up and cleaned and uh, ready to eat. Sort your grapes out. Also, make a tea out of it as well. So I'll probably do another little promotional video for it when um, when everything's ready. I'm gonna say I get back and put the kettle on, but I've already had a brew. Not sure how far this, these five are gonna go. I'm going to trust them for a little while, go back and check on Toon. She's taking it easy this morning, still in bed, so... Uh, old Muggins did all the animals. Oh, we'll show you in another video in a few days. We've got a goat house now. We've got no goats, but we've got a goat house. Um, we paid a guy to take out our old poultry shed at the other house. And uh, they brought it here. So that's the start of the clean-up in the garden, the village house. Now we've just got to source our goats. There's two guys that we can get them off around here, so Tune's just got to give them a tinkle. Gonna try and get three, uh, two girls and, and one boy. Could just let them loose on that island for about a year and get them to eat all that. But again, we want to utilise them the same as the, uh, the geese and the ducks and set up sort of like temporary cells and get them to clean along here. That's the idea anyway. Only thing is, we've got no shade for them, so we might have to set up temporary shade for them as well. Not too sure about goats, because uh, some of them obviously originate from deserts, so I'm, I'm not sure. I'll have to check up on the breeds and see if they need shade or not. Can't put them in the bamboo unless we tether them, because uh, they're going to eat all the new bamboo shoots. Right then, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, another thank you for your continued support and uh, asking how Toon's doing after her treatment. I would put her at about 95 TP now, which is 90% Toon power. Um, apart from her scorpion sting, she, she's almost back up to, to full speed. And uh, yeah, very good. Right, I've changed my mind. Let's go and put the kettle on. Ta-da for now, guys.